This package right here I have in front of me is the All Elusive Chewy HI12 keyboard. Now I didn't expect this one to actually arrive today. Lucky I was home, DHL just dropped it off, but I actually paid for just the free postage, which is uh, normally with Post NL to Europe with Banggood. But for some reason they sent it out with DHL. I'm not complaining because luckily I didn't have to pay any tax on this. They declared it as a 12 US keyboard. So I think that got out of uh, DHL's tax radar somehow and no taxes to pay on it, which is really good because normally DHL will charge me a 15 euro document fee and then 21% here in Spain, which is quite horrendous, which I'm now opting for free postage most of the time. Now this keyboard, don't know why it took so long to come out. Um, quite poor of Chewy really because the tablet's been out now for a good two months, I think, or, or maybe even more than that. And why they've taken so long to bring it out. They should have had this lined up and ready to go with the tablet itself. It's a little beat up the box there. Hopefully it's okay. Not exactly uh, wonderful packaging there, but as long as it's not damaged. So a typical Chewy box, a brown box, nothing else on it just apart from Chewy's actual details, their website. Now the color I got is the gray version, there we go, and the white keys you can see there. Now one of the changes that did happen we know of is the trackpad here. It was originally going to also be white, which, yeah, <laughs> I didn't want white trackpad either. I don't, in fact, want white keys, but first glance, it looks okay. Doesn't feel as heavy as I thought it would. And you see, it's got a lot of screws there on the bottom. Everything's just been all screwed in. Uh, and we do have either side the port, but let me get it out of this plastic wrap. Take a closer look at it. All right. So we do have a couple of little rubber feet at the front there you can see, which is good. That's hopefully going to keep the uh, the screen from touching and getting all scratched up. So let's have a look. There's a bit of flex in it you can see. Uh, I'm pushing down relatively hard here. And we do have status LEDs. If I move that up a little closer to the camera there, we have one for number lock and a caps lock there. And also... F11 function F11 is going to disable the trackpad, which is good. And a few other options there. Print screen button is via their function. We have home page up and down end. And just have a quick. Seems okay. The travel of the keys there doesn't seem too bad. And another look there. They, we've got white. Rubber feet on the bottom. They should have gone with grey as well on that. Now the material of it is, I would call a rubberized paint job. There's no other real way to describe it, and it looks like it's going to be fairly fingerprint resistant there. But I do know for a fact that this material does tend to scratch a little and quite easy. Now the hinge mechanism that seems to be very tight there uh, looks quite. Okay, these are Pogo ports there, but it's a little rough if you can get if I can get the camera to zoom into that. Focus on it, I should say. Yeah, it's I wouldn't say wonderful quality there. You can see what this part at least is metal. And there's the Pogo pins there. So a quick have a look at the weight and then I'll get my Chewy HI12 connected up to it, plugged into it. Okay, so it's 741 grams. That's reasonably heavy for a keyboard. But they've had to have obviously put a counterweight in here. This definitely feels like they've got a bit of metal in there. So here is my Chewy HO12. And I'll just slot that in. So hopefully the magnets are going to pull that together. And there we go. Okay. So that is the full angle back there, which 
is around about standard for this kind of transformer style keyboard you see there. If they had it back any further, you'd have risk of tipping it over. Now I can tap it, and there's a bit of wobble there to it, but it doesn't feel like it's going to completely fall down or anything, which is good. And in person, actually, it doesn't look too bad. And ideally, I'd like those keys to at least be a dark grey or black, but it doesn't seem that bad to me. Let's have a look at the uh, the trackpad. So we have mouse, left and right buttons there. Uh, there's flex in it. I don't know if you can see that. Definitely quite a bit of flex, really, I'd say, in this keyboard. Probably due to the fact that they just use plastic there on the top. Uh, so just go along here and open up Notepad. And just do a quick test type. Hello, how are you? Feels okay. I mean, it, it's alright. It's going to, don't think it's going to take me too much to adjust to this. The size is definitely quite good because that's very um, large. There almost feels as large as my Surface Type Cover 4. Not quite. That's just a little bit larger. But no, no very similar actually in, in terms of size there. Having those two together. And the key size, almost about the, the same. I would say as the the surface type cover. So I'm just going to quickly measure the key size there for those that want finer details. So 15 millimeters and these keys here I think are around about the same. Are 15.5. So very similar there in size to keys. Now let's have a look and see how it is once it's closed up. So I'm just going to quickly close this up. how that is together. So there we go, it's the one whole unit, doesn't look too bad. And I can see by the looks of that, that it's not actually going to be touching, hard to say honestly, whether that is going to be touching the screen or not, those keys, it looks like they're not actually going to be touching the screen, but it could, with a little bit of a pressure on it maybe, yeah, it looks like there could be a bit of movement there. So if you do have this in a backpack or something, there actually I think there could be a possibility that the keys, at least the bottom row, might actually touch the screen there. And we can also flip it up, I think, and use it in tent mode. Or flip it around, like a presentation mode. because it doesn't have the latch, latch will go any way, so I can flip it up this way here. And, oh, look at that. The weight of the tablet is making the, the hinge actually fall down on its own. There it's going to stay up by itself. If I move it to about there. Okay, tablet's too heavy for the hinge. At that angle, at least. So I'm going to flip that around, put that back in. I can feel the magnets pull it in together too when I put that in place. And just quickly have a look and see what the tablet and keyboard weight is. The total weight together, so it's 1.58 kilos. Rather heavy for what it is. So that's a look there and of the Chewy HI12 keyboard. Now there is another version that comes in gold. Um, and the trackpad will be gold, I think, on that model too. So the, the trackpad at least will match up. My first impressions, and I, I think it's um, it's not too bad. Definitely, uh, as I mentioned, complements the tablet. It's good to see that they actually went with a transformer style dock. It's uh, something that I do prefer rather than using a type cover on such a large tablet. I think it's just a little bit more sturdier. So it's got the counterweight in there to stop it from tipping over. That is good. It has the rubberized matte paint job which looks to be quite resistant to fingerprints and smudges good trackpad is very small um, I need some more time on with it I don't think it's that good really 
but it's better than nothing. And overall, I mean, we've got all the function keys we need on there, very large keyboard. The typing experience, I think, is going to be just fine, and the two USB 2 ports either side is handy, giving us a total of four full-sized USB ports. It's something you don't normally see on tablets. Now, the, the negatives that I've already encountered here, the fact that um, it is quite a heavy tablet, so the hinge is struggling a little it's fine up until you get it to about there, which isn't going to be a problem if you're using it like this. But if you're going to flip it around and use it in that presentation mode and you want to have it about a 45 degree angle there, then it looks like the weight of the tablet is going to slowly cause it to drop down, which isn't very good. The build quality, I'm going to say, is average. I mean, it doesn't look too bad, but there definitely is a bit of, a bit of flex in there, you can see, and the keyboard definitely has flex there on the hinge all in all for 40 or so US I think it's it's okay that price will probably come down after a while you can see that um, already look at that look at look at that <laughs> a screw just came out I literally just pulled a screw out there's already one screw coming loose don't know whether that's from the transit or not I'll see if I can screw that one back in uh, not really good to see that so yeah, build quality, very average, I think. But I do like having at least a full-size keyboard without having to use Bluetooth, which tends to slow down my internet. All right, so that is the Chewy HO12 keyboard there. Thank you for watching. I will have the dual boot model coming soon. So keep on out for videos of that. I will cover the Android side of things on this particular model. I've already gone over Windows quite a bit. So the dual boot model will literally just log into Windows to see how much free space there is and then move over and check out how well this tablet performs and what it's like to use it with Android. Thanks for watching this video and hopefully see you back in the channel soon. Bye for now.